Hey there. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Happy Sunday. Mm. I'm not sure if you can see those amazing peaks behind me. That's the Grand Tetons. We made it back to uh, to Jackson Hole. Woohoo! And this, my friend, is to be celebrated. <laughs> my wife right now is uh, um, is out uh, skiing those amazing peaks, uh, and while well, I'm having tea with you, because um, oh my gosh, this is a time to celebrate, and uh, I am resting because we. Um, uh, in the United States, uh, in our mountainous region out west, we had huge snowstorms. Did you see this? Snow just, I mean, snow to the point where super dangerous though, where literally ski towns are saying, please don't come, don't come, you will die. <laughs> Avalanches and roads being shut down and all of that. Well, we were leaving Chicago right before all of that conversation was to be had, but unfortunately we got caught in a um a diversion uh one of those uh, legs of the storm hit jackson as we were trying to land didn't work out we got diverted to uh to denver and thus began our three days <laughs> attempting to get home um so that is why i am so very joyous this morning and uh, i kicked my wife out and said go uh tackle the tackle the slopes we very much deserve it <laughs> Um, mm, well, we do have a little bit of cut catching up to do, um, before, uh, uh, I left, uh, um, uh, before I left Chicago, as you know, I went to meet with my team, my oncologist, uh, to check in. This was the, uh, first really month of the, that new um, oral chemo drug that has just been approved by the FDA. Uh, I'm taking it and taking all the notes so that they can use it for future uh, folks. Um, and I had a CT scan, a uh, CT scan and um, uh, you know checking on, on, on things. So um, we needed to review all of that. And then I had uh, um, time with my palliative uh, uh, team to talk about uh, pain meds. Um, <laughs> okay, short story, I started taking pain meds. I, this week, my, uh, this week was my five year cancer anniversary. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer. I was told uh, I had um, two to six months at the most to live. And uh, wow, <laughs> I remember um, looking at the statistics for five years, less than 14% of people with my disease make it to five years. And I just, I just, I always thought, about, wow. And I did. I have. And it is amazing. It's insane. And that is why I am taking that new uh, oral chemo drug. I don't believe it's going to be some miracle and save me or or it might give me an extra month or two. Yay. Um, but it's for science. Because you've always heard me say, you have to stay alive. I have to stay alive to keep up with the science. And so I have to take that drug so that we can learn from it and the next people can take that drug. Right, and that's the uh, uh, that's how I felt this entire time. Um, and so, on my uh, five year anniversary, how I choose to uh, chose to celebrate uh, uh, this year uh, was to um, start my uh, pain management. Hmm, it's taken a lot uh, to get here. Um, I realized even more so this week, <laughs> uh, I can choose peace. I can choose peace. I can choose this. Mm. Well, let me tell you first, before we get into like the deep emotional side of, of this, uh, decision, at least for me, 
<laughs> I have to give props. I love, we have uh, uh, my oncology team uh, at Rush. Um, we have uh, uh, my oncologist, Dr. Leslie, and then he has his, what we just call his right hand, which is uh, Anita. Uh, Anita Sharko, I think is her last name. Um, I've been working with her for years. She's absolutely amazing. This is the thing that I appreciate about her is that she takes the time. First of all, she takes time to get to know all of us. We all feel very confident knowing when we always, we talk about her in the lobbies. So we're like, oh, well, you know, with the, Anita takes care of us, right? Uh, and um, she knows that I need logic. I need data. I need to, uh, I might end up coming to the same decision that she's, that she's putting in front of me now and, and, and guiding me here to A, but I want to check out B first. She knows most likely I'll come back to A once I collect all the information <laughs> and if it's the right decision, right? So this week when I showed up uh, on Monday um, for all of these, I had uh, I had appointments starting with blood work at 7 uh, and I was at the hospital till 3.30 and um, it was rough. It was rough. I could barely walk by the end of it. Uh, I was, I was in really rough shape. Um, and mentally it was breaking me down because I, I was just having flashbacks of, of, um, that first year. Uh, uh, I had to, um, for this particular visit this past week, I had to walk, uh, from one building <laughs> through to the main building and to another building. So three buildings I had to walk through. And that just hasn't been a big deal in a really long time. Um, I mean, obviously I haven't tried it in months, <laughs> but um, it just, it was a really big deal on Monday. So it was, it was a hard day. And uh, when I got to uh, uh, Anita's, uh, the appointment that I had with my oncologist, uh, you know, I came into the room and they were like, oh, <laughs> because I was in rough shape. Um, one of the things that we talked about is uh, um, I've had an uh, increase in blood pressure. Uh, I've had an increase in blood pressure and um, I have always, believe it or not, had like stellar blood pressure, stellar throughout all of these last five years, throughout my life. I have no problem. I have no cholesterol problems, blood pressure problems. I have no other problems besides cancer. <laughs> uh, and with, uh, uh, but my blood pressure, one of the things we've been checking it every single week since I stopped infusion therapy and started the this oral pill um, because one of the side effects is potentially high blood pressure. So I'm taking my blood pressure, watching it go up. Okay. So I'm having the conversation with her. She's like, well, it is going up. So I know you don't like to take medication, but you know, in this case, we might have to do medication. I'm like, I'm all down for it if it makes sense. You know that. I said, but what about the rib uh, pain that I'm managing? Like, the, all of the muscles uh, uh, contracting and, and um, you know, all, all of this, all of this could, that I would assume could put pressure on my blood pressure, right? Like, <laughs> and so uh, she's like, absolutely, of course I could. Um, so, but we need to figure out what it is, whether it's the, you know, because either way it's going up and it's pretty, you know, uh, uh, and we need to stop that. Uh, and so let's figure out what the source is. I'm with you. So if it's the drug itself, right now, I'm thinking it's the drug because that's the only set of data that I have that's changed. I know you have this pain. So maybe if you take the pain medication and it moderates the pain, so then your blood pressure goes down, then we know that you are managing pain and that is what is impacting this that makes sense right i'm like okay so i just wanted to use the excuse of the pain she wants to break it down into data she's right let's do this so um plus two i've just been i've just been i hit the wall of, of pain i'm crying at night and it's just as you always tell me i don't need to be in this position. And then after, um, honestly, uh, 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 my oncologist got me there with this dance of logic back and forth. And I was, okay, I think I need to take try the pain medication. If my blood pressure goes down, then we know that as she, 
therapist said, I am managing way too much pain and I definitely need to be on the pain medication. If it doesn't go down, then it is the alternate drug and I can make the decision to continue the pain medicine or not because we're trying it out with, uh, with pills. Um, so I got there logically with that conversation. Uh, but then, you know, I was talking with, uh, um, I was talking with Gabby's dad, uh, that night. Uh, Gabby's dad died two months, two months or three months before I was diagnosed. Um, he died of cancer. He died of very painful, sad death of cancer. And I was chatting with him uh, on Monday night. And I, I think, you know, um, the last year of his life, he sat in, uh, he had this over, this, this big uh, uh, reclining chair, right? Reclining chair that has like the, like the bags on the side where you can put stuff, right? And, and, uh, yeah, he had, he had a sweet little setup, right? Uh, um, but, uh, um, he couldn't leave that chair. He was in so much pain. He was... I remember once he, he turned to me because I was trying to I was trying to get him to at least let me to help him physically move his space from that chair to um, out front of their house. They had the most gorgeous gardens that they had spent fifty years building, which was beautiful. And I wanted to set him in the, in the center of that. And and he just turned to me and he said, "Don't you think I'd love to? Don't you think I want to?" I'm in so much pain. I can't describe it to you, Nicole. I can't, I can't make you understand how much pain I'm in. I just can't. I can't do it. And he put his earphones back on and he watched, went back to watching TV or staring at the TV. I don't think he ever changed it. And he was that way for a year. And when we were chatting this past Monday night, he, he was telling me that uh, he wished he wished he he chose not to use um, morphine or or he didn't he didn't have anyone to work with to help him to understand like I do I have people that are willing to put the time and energy into figuring out okay Nicole we're going to start off at the absolute lowest dose here with this drug and then so you don't get sleepy we're going to try this drug midday and then we're going to try this and all of this can change and we'll we'll continue to work together so it's what you want what you the experience that you want that's what I'm working with that's the gift I have and that's you know as a, as a human and, and even in this country, whether it becomes because of, of the health, type of health insurance you have or the type of money you have or the type of willingness that you have to play with science, you don't always have that. And he did not. And he reminded me of that in our chat on Monday night. He didn't have someone to explain to him. Maybe if he had, he would have rode that morphine train. Maybe if he had, he wouldn't have sat there grinning and burying it. Although, <laughs> he didn't share this with me in our chat on Monday night. <laughs> Next time, I think I'm going to have to remind him. We did discover after he died, my father-in-law was, uh, um, he worked for a French aerospace engineering company. So he traveled around the world and uh, he had an incredible collection because of business of scotch and he loved scotch. Uh, and so he had this 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 uh, wine cellar and this, uh, filled with scotch. And... <laughs> <laughs> None of us had looked at it in the longest time because he was sick and, you know, we used to, it would, it would have been a thing we would have enjoyed together. Um, but when he died, we went down to, we thought we, let's go grab a bottle and, uh, and celebrate his life. And there were no bottles left. <laughs> so he definitely grinned and bared it, but he, uh, he enjoyed, uh, he enjoyed it. His scotch helping him along the way, apparently. Uh, anyways, I, I think that between 
um, chatting with my doctors, chatting with George and thinking, yeah, I don't, I don't want to spend the next year sitting in my chair, screaming in my head. <laughs> I just assume I have a year. Wow. That's a crazy... Hmm. That doesn't normally happen to me. That was kind of nice. Like a normal person experience. I kind of felt that way about the blood pressure. You know, if she was going to give me blood pressure medicine, like I told her, hey, <laughs> I have a, I'm having an old person experience. I'm having blood pressure medication for my 50 year old body. <laughs> oh, well, I did not start uh, uh, playing with um, any of the medications uh, that I chatted about with my team until I got home to Jackson, which was only yesterday. So I really don't have much to um, to chat uh, to share with you. Um, I will say that uh, I take that back Friday. So I did Friday was day one, and I tried the absolute minimum, bare minimum, and I did learn a lesson very quickly. Um, it was the amount that I'm supposed to take is supposed is eventually it, it, it will be, well, it is, uh, two times a day. So once in the morning, once at night, but to just get used to it, I was just taking it once in the morning and just letting it roll for 24 hours. Just to, you know, like wade your, wade your feet into it. Right. I just want to do it right. Uh, and, um, because I know that there's also psychological things, right? So I just want to dip my toes into it. Uh, well, yeah, that first day I dipped my toes into it. I took it in the morning and then I will say Friday, whew, I could breathe. Do you see my use of this arm? It does make me afraid that I'm going to hurt it because it doesn't, it's not painful. That was our greatest concern was to make sure that I could start to inhale deeply again so I don't get pneumonia. Right. Uh, and I felt my leg for sure. I felt the bone pain, but not, not like screaming. <laughs> so yay. Until it wore off in the middle of the night. Oh my God. I had been saying to my wife that, I <laughs> <coughs> that afternoon, Oh, <laughs> it's still hurts. Um, that I didn't think it was, oh, well, it's going to be okay. It's not that strong because it just doesn't feel that strong. <laughs> and and uh, uh, that evening, I said, I still feel my leg, you know, so this is good. I don't, you know, I still feel clarity here because that's one of my psychological things is that um, I, I want to make sure that I have clarity in the decisions that I make. Oh. You know, I, that's been very important for the last five years. Remember, I'm the one that's caught the growth of my cancer a few times. So, clarity. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, no, I realized that night how much this pain medicine actually does work. And lo and behold, as soon as I started taking the pain medicine, my blood pressure went down. Uh, as my uh, team has said, Nicole, you're uh, managing way too much pain if it was putting your blood pressure into heart attack areas. So uh, super happy about all of that. <laughs> and the very next day, I decided to start that protocol once in the morning, once at night, um, because it is working. I It is extraordinarily painful, <laughs> apparently, when not on pain med. Thank you. Ooh. So, I have, I have moved into uh, the last step, perhaps, but at least I can do it with movement because, as you know, uh, I really have been immobile for the last four to six weeks. Been a lot of pain because of uh, the broken rib, been a lot of pain because of the bone pain because of the bulk, you know, so this means I can participate a little bit more. Hot diggity. Hot diggity. 
And if I can get all of this into just a fucking chill, right? Then I can really start to make those dreams come true of waking up in the morning, having a cup of coffee, reading a comic book, stretching, going, you know, I, 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 I keep repeating the same dream because it hasn't really happened yet. <laughs> this week got blown up because I ended up being in the Denver airport uh, hotel for like three days. <laughs> okay. All right. So this coming week should be no appointments, managed pain, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do things like cook dinner. I might, uh, um, I might get out my clay work. Oh, I just want a week of peace. Cause you can choose peace. I got hung up on that this week when my friend said that to me. You're still making choices, Nicole. You're just choosing peace. I'd like a little piece for my wife and I. Hopefully that's what this week brings. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you next Sunday.